Hello, today I'm going to show you how to make a window mobile or a mobile for your window. It's going to feature um, a rainbow because rainbows currently are of a lot of interest to everybody out there and we know that they're standing for supporting our NHS which we are all doing. Um, at the beginning of this short film you saw hopefully an image that looks something like this. Okay, I'll hide my face, it's better. Um, a rainbow, wherever there's a rainbow, there's a sun. And in our case, we're going to have leaves and flowers raining down through your window. And they'll move in whatever breeze we get, maybe from the radiator from when the window's open. The second slide that you saw at the beginning will also have shown you some alternative ideas to add to the rainbow and the sun. So logos down here, um, I've given you some options like wild animals, British animals, um, toys, I think, um, the seaside, things we see at the seaside, and my particular favourite, sweets and cake, um, all of which are um, really beautiful colours. The animals can be more naturalistic and the others can be as psychedelic and as bright as you really want to. And I'm going to do the same with the leaves and the flowers. Welcome back. You've just seen uh, two more slides. I've got loads of those for you. One which shows you a list of uh, tools that we're going to need for this little project. Um, it's not a very long list, but if you want to add things, please do. Um, I'm going to say things like, I need scissors. You only need one pair, but I'm an artist. I have lots of scissors because I like them. And it makes my life easier. And I've got to show you what I use. Uh, so scissors, um, marker pens, oh yeah, sellotape. Uh, I've got double-sided sticky tape as well because it's useful. I've also got glue sticks. These are sometimes readily available. And of course, a stapler. Um, this is my particular favorite thing. Um, hopefully you've got some in the house. If you haven't, you maybe have got something else. You've got some glue or you've got some tape. I hope you've got them. Uh, the other slide you saw was a list of potential materials, one of which I think said wire hanger. Hopefully it did. Um, I won't go into the materials, we'll see those as we get to them. The hanger, I've already started to strip it down. This is there so that we have an idea of a shape. Um, I want to be able to hang this uh, mobile up in the window and a hanger it says it in the name really, it seems a good idea. If you get a wire hanger, they're really easy to uh, untangle, as you can see. If you're a small person, get a big person to do it. And if you're a big person and your hands are hurting, get a pair of these pliers. I love these. These are really good uh, and useful. So um, I use a lot of wire in some of the things I build, so uh, I'm used to it. Take your time with wire. Um, it doesn't always want to go where you want it to go. Um, next time you see me, I'll have bent this into uh, something resembling a rainbow, I hope. Cool. You're back. Good. So, I've gone on a little bit quicker than that, and I know you've probably come straight to it, but in that split second, I've managed to make a few extra things. So, here, hopefully, you can see uh, this, the wire. There it is. That's the eye I was talking about. I've already made my rainbow. I'm not going to go on about rainbows because I would imagine most of you have probably made one already. There's rainbows in all the windows near me. Um, I don't need to go on about it at length, which means I don't have to try and remember that rhyme. You know the one, the Duke of York went blah, 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 to get the colours right. I don't have to do it because you know it already. Okay, so I've made a rainbow and I used the wire shape that we've already made as a rough template and guide for the size and shape of my rainbow. I have used um, a translucent paper, tracing paper. Um, you could use greaseproof paper. If you haven't got these sort of things, use paper. Just use ordinary paper. 
and colour it in. Look, I've got one here, hanging off screen. There you go. Really badly coloured in, ladies and gentlemen, but it shows you what I mean. That's an ordinary piece of paper with a rainbow on it. Stick that onto your hook. That will be fine. I've used paints and uh, felt pen. We'll get to that in a bit, uh, the paints and things, because there's another, there's another slide coming, believe me. Once you've got this sellotaped on, just sellotape it all the way around. You can see I've got a bit there missing. Where's my sellotape? Here we go. This is the other thing about sellotape. It gets everywhere, doesn't it? There we go. I'll just put a bit on there. Ideally, use scissors, not your teeth. But if you stick it on like that, that will just hold the sellotape to the wire. There we go. Oh, that's quite good. Okay, there you go. Can you see the light shining through it? I can see the camera shining through it, so hopefully that's okay. Okay, so we've now got a rainbow. I haven't done the sun yet. I'm going to do that in a minute. I just wanted to cut a few other things up first. Um, we're going to have to put things hanging down, streamers hanging down. I'm going to use um, some raffia that I found. Um, I like it because it, it's sort of natural product, but it's also a bit curvy and it's also flat, so it's easy to stick things to. And you can get it these days in a variety of different colours. I've got some light blue, I've even got some purple, lilac. Um, this stuff, uh, you can buy it. I've seen it for sale in supermarkets, um, garden centres, which we can't use at the moment. But places like the range sell it as well. Um, if you can't get hold of it, don't worry. We can use string, we can use wool, we can use cotton tape, we can even use, even use paper. Okay? Don't worry about it. Cut the strips out. I'm actually making strips, I've got some here, um, that's a roughly the same length as the width of my rainbow. So rainbow is what we said, about 50 centimetres. My string's about that. And I'm going to cut out six. So that there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. We could have some in the middle, I suppose, but I don't quite like the idea of the gap. But um, we can think about that later. Hi. So we've got our six pieces cut, hopefully. We've now got to decide what we're going to decorate them with. And I've got things here ready. So you remember the leaves. Okay. So, probably at the end of the film, I'll also put up some reference material, uh, either things that you can see or a link that you can go to and download if you have a computer, print off if you've got a printer. You can do either. I've got to teach you that part. Um, <clears throat> so, for this one, we're going to use some leaves, which I've created here. Okay, don't ask me what they are. I did when I first copied them out. So I think that's a beech leaf, that's that's a leaf, and, and that's a leaf, and, and that's a leaf. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. And then these are flowers. That's a bluebell, that's a tulip, and it's that way up. And when it's that way up, I've no idea what it is, and that's some sort of daisy and there's some sort of primrose. Okay. So we've got them on paper. We can just colour these in with felt pens which is no problem at all. If you're using this sort of thin paper that you get with printers, it's the cheap stuff. <coughs> it's in supermarkets, I've seen it in Sainsbury's the other week. Um, and you use a felt pen, the colour goes through, so you can just use one side, it doesn't really matter. Ideally, you cut out two of these and stick them together with a staple, and I'll show you how we do that when we attach them to the strings. That's the best way in my mind to do it, because then you've got front and back the same. Um, why should people on the outside have the best picture when you want to look at it on the inside? A bit twice. Um, so do lots of those. So what we can do is use paper, cut those out. We can also use coloured paper. These are the sort of things that I've mentioned at the beginning of this short film. Um, I've got some here that I've pinched uh, from my uh, supply boxes. Uh, it's a studio, so there's all sorts of stuff in here. Uh, and again, I've picked really bright colours because I like them. I'm a carnival artist after all. Um, those are great colours, aren't they? This stuff, as you'll see, is white on the inside. <coughs> it's freeze paper. This makes it cheap, but it gives it a bright colour. 
and I'm just going to do the same. I'm going to cut two out and stick them together. I might even have an orange one and a blue one together. I, I, I don't know. So I'll think about it as I'm doing it. So that's some paper. I've also got this. It, these, I like these. These are really good. And you're bound to have these. I know you will. Um, not necessarily quavers. These are my particular favourite. Mainly because, ladies and gentlemen, they are only 360 kilojoules uh, pack. No idea what that means. It just means that there's 86 calories, which is a really handy sized small snack in between meals. Mm. Advert over. What you can do with these, is, however, is clean them up, cut them inside out, and the silver on the inside, which is great. Look at that. And again, we'll cut two out per leaf, if you like, or per flower, and staple them together so that there'll be silver on both sides. But also, we might see bits of yellow. So I'm going to add those in because I think that's a really nice idea. I've got, what else have I got? I've got some crepe paper. Here's some, look, crepe paper. This looks quite good, quite floppy. I've got some cardboard I found at the bottom of the cupboard attached to a head. Um, this has got like, some sort of globe logo on it, which I'll use. I've also found felt. Um, I made a few giant Father Christmases last December and I have some felt left over. So. Um, I might use that as well, although red's not the greatest of colours for what we're trying to do. As you can see, I haven't quite decided yet on, on the paper and on the, the colours, but that doesn't really matter. When I'm painting, I'm either going to use felt pens, and I'm probably going to use felt pens because you probably would as well, and they are easily readily available. If you haven't got them, you can get them next time you risk go shopping. You can find them. The other thing which has been lurking on the side, I noticed, on the feedback, um, is these sort of things, which are great for this sort of job. <coughs> these are, um, I call them bingo markers, they're just paint sticks with a ball on the end. Um, they're great. There you go, look. Ooh, look. Um, I use these a lot, um, especially with uh, translucent paper and lanterns and workshops with children. If you've got anything like that, fantastic. If you haven't, use paint. If you haven't got paint, use crayons or felt paints. Um, I'm going to cut now and you can uh, come back and see me in a few minutes if you like and I'll have made a selection of different leaves with different treatments and I'll show you them all and it will just be a collection of a variety of different materials to give you an idea of what they might look like. Okay, I'll see you shortly. Hi, welcome back. For what might be for you five minutes and these been several hours. Um, it's probably worth remembering that this will take quite a long time. Um, leaves and flowers and things cutting out are quite fiddly. Um, I've forgotten but they are. Um, I've done lots of different ones um, and I've got some in my... you end up making a lot. Um, some are little leaves made out of the different coloured paper. Okay, put them together. Um, I've got lots of those. I've got some of those little flowers made from the crisp packet. There you go. What else have I got in here? Oh yes, yeah. so remember those? Remember that shiny silver with the funny flashing sort of logo on the on the base? That's there. Um, I've also used bits of copper, and I've even used the sort of Translation, translucent tracing paper, which could also be used as uh, grease proof paper, and that makes really beautiful curly leaves. And you paint them, and you can see through both sides. So I'm really quite pleased with that. Um, and we're going to use them. So all I'm going to do now is is just put some of these leaves onto my piece of raffia that is 50 centimeters long. I'm leaving a little bit just so I've got something to play with, and I've got a piece of old paper here that I'm going to use. And I'm going to use um, a, blue, a glue stick. This happens to be a blue stick, because that's what I found in the box. I've never used a blue stick before. I hope it dries clear, but who knows. So, I've got these little leaves, and some are matching, and some are not. Some red ones. Oh, there you go. No. Yes, there you go. So there's a pair. All I'm going to do with my blue glue stick, it's very unusual, Oh, works okay though, I think. There's glue on side, and I'm going to 
put my string, my rapier, through the middle of it, like that. It's fat, so it sticks. And then with a little bit of glue on this one, just a little bit, fit that over the top. If I had my glasses, I'd be able to see what I was doing, wouldn't I? There you go. Look at that. Okay, peel that off. And look, I've got a leaf on the piece of string. I'll put another one on, and then I'll cut this. Otherwise, this video is going to be so long, you'll be bored to death. There we go, it's a blue one. So, <clears throat> same job, around there. Some of the other leaves I've made, uh, using different materials, which I will show you uh, when you come back. Um, I've used a stapler to attach them, purely because it was easier and quicker, and also drier. And I'm not so sure I like blue, blue, blue sticks, but hey, beggars can't be choosers, can they? So I've now got two leaves, and I'm sticking them quite close together, I think, because really I just want lots and lots of leaves hanging down, and that will just sort of wave about in the wind, or whatever. Um, I think I'll stop it there. Um, you can carry on, can't you? Um, you've got the original drawings which you can use uh, coloured in with felt pens. You can cut them out and use them as a template, which is what I've done with some of this. Make lots and then make some more. Um, I think that's the sort of the rule. Don't make 20 because 20 will look like 20 and not a lot. Um, do your best. I'll see you soon. <laughs> I just thought I'd knit back. Hopefully you're still cutting out madly leaves and flowers and things. Because um, I didn't refer to the sun, did I? Um, this is how I've got my sun so far. I'm using that translucent paper. You could just use paper. Um, I've cut a piece of that copper stuff I found and stuck it in the middle. You could easily use tin foil or something else, glit glitter, if you've got any. I don't use it, mainly because I haven't got any. Um, what I've also done is I'm letting it dry at the moment, but what I've done to get this sort of colour is just not one colour, it's two. And I've used two shades and it's a bit like painting with watercolour really. Here's the lighter shade, which is orange, and I'm just going to put some on there just to show you. So I'm doing it all the same way because I want it to look like rays of sun. If I go sideways, it won't look so good. While it's still wet, it's still wet, I'm going to put some red on the top. Now the red mixes in because it's still wet. And so we get red. It's not a very good red, which is why I like these, because they're very thin. But what I'm getting is a sort of a merging of colours. That's what I teach a lot sponges and things. We haven't done much of that but maybe next time if we do something else we can. Can you see now what I've managed to get there is um, thickness and thin, depth of colour, lighter coats of colour, orange underneath, red on top. Um, don't do it the other way around otherwise you're wasting your time. Um, and it gets a sort of beautiful depth of colour. Um, looks more like the sun. I think that's good. That looks really clever and if we can do it so that the light ultimately will shine through it it will look even better won't it? Um, I'm going to let that dry and while that dries um, hopefully you will carry on. I will make sure that there's a template for this um, along with templates for everything else so that when you do get hold of this uh, finished thing um, you will... blue, 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 glue, how strange. When you do get hold of this thing, you'll be able to download them and have a go, hopefully. Okay, um, I'll see you in a few minutes. This is the final snippet I'm going to do. Um, I've got a completed thing in front of me. Um, I've stuck all the different flowers in the different techniques, the different materials together so that you could easily see them. I think probably under normal circumstances I'd mix the whole lot up because I think it would look better. But 
we are trying to show alternatives here, aren't we? Um, you'll also remember probably that I was muttering about all the giant Father Christmas I built before Christmas. I found a bit of fur from his hood. I mean, he was sort of four or five metres tall, so there was a lot of fur. Um, clouds. That's what they look like to me. So I've added those, not on the drawing, but that's what we're here for. So hopefully you can see this. I'll put it up here and show you what we've done. So now we've got a rainbow and I've got the different leaves holding down. So here on this side and this side, that was the one you watched me do. These are the ones with the coloured paper, both sides, and they're stuck covering the tape. This one here, do you remember I mentioned red felt? I've done red felt and cut a bit of copper out. Not sure that I like that, to be honest. It looks okay, but it doesn't really, maybe it looks too Christmassy, I'm not sure. This is the daisies, which are just yellow paper with a white center. This is the translucent paper, and I've just put lots of them on and the colors look really pretty. Here is a mixture of some of the crisp packet stuff, some of the silver things, and some of these leaves that are just colored in with a felt pen on paper. Don't they look good? Who needs all the rest when you can do that? And again, paper at the end. This is the sun. It's nearly dry. It's not quite dry. It's getting a bit late now here. Um, you'll notice on the spires here, can you see, I folded them up, put creases in them. Makes them stand up then, which is good. And the copper in the middle. And of course, some fluffy clouds. You can't have a rainbow without clouds. You can't have rain without a rain without a rainbow. Can you have rain without a rainbow? Of course you can. All I'd like to say now is thank you for watching and let us know if you need to know anything else. This is just one of many things we can do to help you. Give us a shout and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.